In today's video, we're going to be looking at creating atmosphere and depth within your composites. Most of my composites are completed and finished in Photoshop and that's because I've been using it for years and also there's other parts of software plugins that I use to enhance the composites as well. Luminar is in fact one of them. There's a few things in Luminar that I do tend to use quite a lot when I am creating the images. Some of the images that are created in Photoshop can translate into Luminar. So I thought I would show you this one here. I'm not going to do it as detailed as the original one that was done in Photoshop, but I'm going to talk you through the ideas of creating depth and atmosphere within the image. So we're going to get started with this. A lot of the composites I'm doing currently for something that I'm working on involve 3D work. So this is one of the 3D uh, objects that I've been working with. So what I'll do is I'll dive right into this and I'll talk you through it. Hopefully I'll keep it within under 15 minutes but I'm going to talk you through some of the things that I consider when I am creating depth within a composite. As you can see we have a PNG here and what I'm going to do straight away is I'm going to add a layer. Now with the added layers I have all other images added in here and I've got ones from a way back when I was doing other composites but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a background image in this one and I'm going to put that sky in. And there it is, it has dropped in. I'm also going to scale it up. And we could go over here and we could go fit. I fill, stretch, everything's there, you can do that. I have a tendency to scale. So that's how I normally work, so that I've got control over it. So what I'm also going to do with this, I'm going to turn up the opacity. And because Luminar allows us to drop the layers now, I'm going to drop it behind. Right, the reason I chose this one is because of the colours. That's the reason I worked with this background in this. So that's one of the things that you've got to think about, your colours, your complementary and your contrasting colours as well. So I'm going to leave that at that for the moment. I'll build the image up and then we'll get into the atmosphere and depth. The next layer that I'm going to add has to be mountains. So if I click see all and I'll go down, there should be mountains in here somewhere. Uh, there they are and I'm going to add them in and I, I'm just going to stretch these out because I don't want the mountains to overpower the image and at the moment you can see that the mountains are at the eye level here I'm going to take the mountains right down to about there and perhaps take the scale of them down a bit because I, I want them in the image but I don't want them to be a major part of the image and I'm going to turn the opacity up here now again drop them down behind and we have that so we need to take them in front of <laughs> the sky for this uh, so what I'm also going to do is I'm going to get and mask this and I'm going to mask AI and that will scan the image and it'll work out whether it's a portrait whether it's mountains rocks trees whatever and it will give me the options here and for me I'm taking mountains and there you go, quite a decent edge on that as it is, but I'm going to show you how to refine the edge. So I'm going to take that and we're going to go back and you can see that that's there. As you notice, we need to refine some of the edge. So I'm going to take that into 300% and holding the space bar, I'm going to move down. So I'm now going to jump into masking this. And if I take the brush and I keep the size relatively low, to about that size. Because it's mountains we are working with here, they've got quite hard edges because of the rocks. Although it's in the distance, we'll deal with that in a minute. So I'm going to leave the softness at zero. So it's a hard edge I'm working with here and the strength at 100. And the reason I've dropped it behind straight away is so that I don't have to worry about working over here to get rid of anything. So I'm just going to go in and I'm on paint at the moment. As you saw, I'm going to get back to erase and I'm going to take out some of this and do that, right? I'm just going to follow this round and what I'll do is I'll speed up this part of the video. Right, 
Right, now that that's done, in case you were wondering why I worked with a small brush first and then a larger brush, it's because it's in the distance. We are, if we use a big brush, we're going to have quite a curved edge. So if I work with a smaller brush, it gives us more of a raggedy edge. And I notice a tiny wee bit in there that I'm just going to take out at this distance without zooming in. Now that's us created that. We are going to add a couple more objects to this, but before we do that, I'm going to start the editing process just so that we can see where we are. So we can work in any layer at all. So the first layer I'm going to work on is this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken this layer. So I'm going to get into develop. It's in the distance. I'm going to work with it that way. And remember, these are your worlds, so you can create what you want. I'm not going to make it too dark, but as you notice now, I have some of the mountain missing. So if I go back into the layer properties, into masking, brush, and I'll just make the size of the brush quite big and go to paint. I'll just paint that back in. So that's how I get the trees in there as well. I'll go back down to develop. Now that I'm back into to, to develop, I'm going to pull the highlights back slightly and the shadows back slightly just to darken it down. If I push them too far, they clash with the guard at the front, uh, his arm guard. The next thing I'm going to do is send them into the distance. So I'm going to get into structure and I'm going to turn the structure down so that it softens them. So that Because we've got a lot of detail here, not so much detail here. We don't want that. We don't want drawn beyond this. Within structure, I'll then go down to details and again pull them back and that will again soften everything. And we'll just pull them back all to a relative amount with this. The other one that we can do is we can go down into uh, glow and we can have the soft focus and we can do that and that will soften it again slightly because it's only affecting this layer. Now I may go back and change the structure again but hopefully you'll get the idea with this. So that's quite soft. I may actually get into the layer properties and pull the opacity back but ever so slightly and what that will help that do is it will help it blend with the sky in the background. So let's see if it works. Just very, very slightly, not too much. If we go any more than 90, the sky will start to bleed through that. As you can see now, if you notice down here, the sky is beginning to bleed through. So I'm going to take it back up to around about 88. looks fine for the purposes of this video. Close that down. The sky itself. Now the sky is soft anyway. It's soft, fluffy clouds. But we're going to enhance that again. So I'm going to get into structure. I'm going to pull that back. Not too much. Just a bit there. Details won't really matter too much in this one. Unless I start pulling the medium details and the large details back. Now you can see the difference when I pull the large details back. Let's go for that. So already we have created some depth in here. Back into layer properties. Now we will jump back into the mountains because they're not just where they need to be at the moment. But before that, what we're going to do is create more depth. So far, we're creating depth with the sky, which is all over, the mountains in the background, and the orc in the foreground. So we've got that separation happening. But to enhance that separation, we need to add more. Now, I'm not going to bring anything new in here. I'm just going to work with what I've probably used in previous edits. So let's go for that which is missed, and that should drop in there. Yep, and it's there. Now, at the moment, you can see that that is sitting in the foreground, and I may bring that back into the foreground, just depending on what I do with this, but I'm going to make it a tiny bit bigger. And I'm going to put the opacity quite strong at the moment, and the blend mode to screen. So you can see that already that's created a slight depth, but I don't want it in front at the moment. I want it behind the orc. And that again gives us distance between the orc and the mountains in the background. So now I can pull the opacity back. And it is just tweaking it as you go. You just need to think about how you actually visualize things and how you see distance in objects. Uh, so I'm going to go for that just now. And I'm going to add another layer to give us another form of distance. 
And this one here was those birds that we've used in the past. So let's bring them in. And here, we're just going to scale them straight down. Just to about that. Now, this isn't in the original image. I'm just using what's here because I've got a lightning in the original image. So I'm just going to drop the birds there. For the birds, they're on a white background. Although you can see this here, the birds are in a white background. The blend mode for this, because of the sky, has to be multiply. And here we go. Because if I was to do screen, that happens. If I choose darken, the birds are okay. They're not brilliant uh, for what I'm after. So for me, screen works, uh, multiply works best in this case. I can always pull the opacity of that back as well because again, it's in the distance. We don't have a high contrast. Now we're just going to place that and we're going to place that behind the mist at the moment. So I'm just going to now play around to see where I'm going to leave it. Now I could leave it there because that gives you an eye. You can see the two of them are looking at each other and then they're there. But I'm, I'll just leave them there just now. And it actually creates more distance if you overlap. It gives the impression of more distance between everything. Make it even further, take them smaller as in they are in the distance. Just make sure if you're doing things like this that you don't have anything sticking out the nose or anything that will draw your eye away from your composition. So we could do that. I'm going to leave that at that. So that's us already built that up. The mountains are actually looking okay at the moment, but I still want them a wee tiny bit softer with this. Now need to work in the foreground. So I'm going to add another mist layer because we've got mist in the background. I'm going to add another mist layer. And let's go for, let's just go for that one. And that will drop in there. Again, this is screen blending mode. Uh, for this one so let's just do that and let's let's go into screen and you notice it only affects the air with a tiny part up there that's actually working okay for me if i push the opacity that's too much for me anyway that's too much because it then interacts with the hand and we start to create shapes that aren't there so i'm going to drop that back to just around about there Again, if I wanted to, I could go into the brush, go into a raise, take the softness up to 100% this time, take the size of the brush up, and take the strength down slightly just to soften that effect there. So it will still be there, but it won't be just as harsh. Now, I quite like that there, so let's add another layer. That there. Let's see what that does. That's interesting because, again, this isn't in the original one, but that is actually quite interesting from the point of view. That leads you, his eyes lead you there. That could be leading you back into that image. So there's something that might work for this. Again, screen blending mode. And that works great. I actually quite like that. So I'm going to leave that at that. Again, there's another part of depth within this image. We leave that there. Now, the sky and behind him is too light. So we can go in and utilise the dodge and burn now, which is the new feature of this. So I'm going to get back into the sky here and I'm going to get down to dodge and burn and I'm going to darken this and I'm going to leave the strength 50%, softness at 100 but I'm going to take the brush up because I don't want to concentrate on this. I just want to pass over it. Maybe a couple of times. Not too dark. And that's me. I'm working behind them now. Because I want this area here to blend to that. But yet just to slightly see that there is a line there. Right. So I'll do that and I'll leave it at that. Now the same goes for the mountains down here. So if I go into the mountains layer and I go back into dodge and burn and again, I mount 100, I'm going to leave it at 100 for this. I think, no, I'm actually going to drop that back to about 78 and I'm on darken. So I'm just going to do that and I'm just randomly doing this. It's not 
anything that I need to see, but it will have a subtle effect. If I actually hide that layer, you'll see that it has changed that slightly. So I'm just going to show that layer again. We're actually nearly done with this. It's now just a point of tweaking different parts of the image. So if I turn that down, that gives us a slight depth there. I, if I go to the top layer, I have that. And I can turn that down slightly. Again, giving us depth. If I want to get in and tweak the sky just to make it slightly darker, I can jump back in and I can go to Layer Properties. If you're wondering why I haven't used Atmosphere, I have more control over the PNGs or the images that are here that I'm using for blending than I do Atmosphere. And that's the reason that I very rarely use it within a composite. I have used it, but very rarely. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up to develop and I'm going to bring the exposure of the sky down slightly. Not too much because we want him to stand out and you notice it darkens this down quite a bit. I, I smart contrast that. It's too much of a darkness there. Smart contrast. That should punch the light in here and it did. Uh, so I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to do anything here. I'm now going into the mountains and it's now just tweaking the image. And from that point of view, what we can do is you can see that those mountains are just too prominent in this. So I'm going to get in and move them actually. And if I just do that, move it down there. Already we've created depth. The mountains, I've got to admit, in this case have not worked really, really well. And when I edit these, I edit these. I don't give you the finished image and then work it backwards. I edit them so that you see what happens and how you can rectify things at the same time. So my thoughts now with the mountains are go in and turn the opacity down so that the sky does bleed through. Like so. So you have something there and you can see that something there, but you can't tell where it is. So your mind just says it's mountains. I'm also going to enter the develop module and I'm going to turn the exposure down in it just to see that's better. That's actually a lot better. So there you go. Problem solved for this. If I'd left the mountains more jaggedy, it would probably look a lot better. And we can do that. We can get back into the opacity, the masking, the brush. Take the brush size right down. I'll just paint this big as it is. Softness to 100% in this case. And I'll just make this a wee bit more jaggedy of the mountains. It's maybe even that that's knocking it out for me. So that we have more of that type of effect. And there you go. Let's take that straight edge away there. So you're seeing it as the image is building. That looks a lot better already. I won't labour the point of that. Hopefully you've got the idea. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do with this is this image here, which is the orc. I want to soften this. Now, if you looked at the last video on uh, creating a soft portrait effect, I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm only going to do it with two layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer. And on the top layer, what I'm going to do is I am going to go in to structure and I'm going to draw the structure right back. Now it won't soften it too much within this image. And that's simply because the opacity of the layer you might see it softening if I do that. And then I take that back. You might see a slight change in the face. It's not too much. It's not overdone. I'm then going to get into details. And I'm going to pull the details right back. To about there. There. Now you see the effect happening more. And there. And that may indeed be too much. So let's just go for that effect. I don't want that applied over the entire image. So if I go into layer properties, go into masking, I'm going to a radial gradient and I can click and drag. So I'm going to click and drag from there. 
so that the effect is only applied on the red areas. If I drag that out, like so, and then in there, to about there. Now, I'm guessing with this one, I'm going to take that back just down there a bit further. So everything in red, that will be 100% of the structure and the details softened. As it moves more towards the centre of the image, this should be okay. So if I now go back to properties, everything here should be sharp. Everything here should be softer. And then all we do is we blend that back slightly just to bring back some of the detail. And if I jump down to there, if I click off here, we have this. Now, this for me would be the finished image. There's a couple of tweaks still to make down in here, but hopefully you got the idea of how to create depth using different layers in your images. Hopefully you got something from that and hopefully it lets you see how to create different depth and atmosphere at the same time because the two can work together to create the image. Now I'll put this one beside the image in Photoshop on the screen now. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I mainly work in Photoshop, but I do use Luminar for other things. And if it translates across, that I think would be quite an easy process to learn and to do yourself and for to give you ideas of what to do, I'll create the video in Luminar. So hopefully this one has been helpful or useful to you in the thought process of building composite images. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you very much for taking the time to watch it. If you're only here for the free assets, that's fine as well, because what it is, is in previous Luminar videos, Luminar 4.3, Luminar AI, I provided free assets. If you want these assets to use in any of your edits, please go to the links down below in the description, because I have to clear the links on the 30th of August to make way for new stuff. So if you want them, go get them. You may already have them if you've been following the channel for some time. If you haven't, they may be useful to you as well, but I will be removing them. I have to remove them. I need to reclaim the space. Some of them have been up there for a couple of years now. So if you want them, go get them, help yourself and enjoy using them. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.